Hello again everyone, Joe here. It is Flash Gala once again. That means new characters, this time two new Halloween characters. I normally try to not get spoiled in advance of recording these, but I was, so I know that it is a Halloween vein and a Halloween kukuru. So I'm not going to do a big whole song and dance about, about that. It is what it is, but I don't know what their kits are. I don't know what they do, what their weapons are like, so we have that to look forward to. First off, let's do our let's do our daily draw, our free draw. See if we get anything. Nope. Nice big rare. I'm gonna do the 90 yen draw as I usually do on the galas as well. See if we get lucky on get anything. Nope. Two R's. Fantastic. Right then. Yeah. Let's just look at these quickly. Look at these weapons. So Kukuru's weapon. That's a gun, apparently. I mean, it makes sense it's a gun for her, but I don't know about... I don't think that's a gun. Charge attack. Massive attack. Fall boost to MC's multi-attack. Great, based on number of foes debuffs. Okay. Medium boost to attack and crit. Small boost to attack. That seems fine. Probably not going to be that much used in Titan. Veins is boost to all allies of multi attack rate on Ogi. Big enmity and supplement damage based on how low HP is. That's that all basically just uh Wilness Finger, I think. Is I don't know, is Zephyrus enmity a thing? I don't know. Maybe it is now, with that weapon. I don't know. That weapon seemed potentially good. I'm not that familiar with Zephyrus setups in general. Anyway, let's take a look at Halloween Kukuru, who is Earth, or Ogi. Massive Earth damage to a foe. Dodge all attacks from foes one time. Cool. Add one barrel stabilizer. Okay, so she has some kind of stack. Skill 1, 6, hit earth damage to random th foes, hit to all foes, debuff resistance and earth defense. Stackable and covering fire effect to caster. What is that? Covering fire activates upon attacks while in effect. 6, hit earth damage to random foes, hit to all foes, debuff resistance. And activates upon attacks while in effect. That's... Okay, so is that just three turns of just a big nuke every time you attack? That's pretty cool. Interesting. 8 turn cooldown, so that'll probably go down to 7. Skill 2, 6 hurt more. More, more skill damage. 6 hit earth damage to a foe. Boost to caster's dodge rate. Sharp, race to host, sharp boost to hostility. Okay. Interesting. And she gets, and she'll get dodge all from Ogi as well, so... Looks like a dodge... a dodger. Skill 3, attack without using up a turn. Consumes two barrel stabilizers to end cool. Ooh. Interesting, interesting. Um. Okay. Let's see what our passes are. More likely to be targeted. Deals triple attacks. Normal attacks deal three hit. So that's okay. So we now have a Valentine Grimnir auto's passive in Earth. Interesting. Upon dodging, boost all allies attack and defense, stack about add one barrel stabilizer. The big obviously the the big thing that people are gonna be focusing on is this. I think the big issue here is that Earth as an element doesn't have like a whole lot of like stuff to support this because you know typically with the other characters that have this passive like like Grimnir and uh, Poseidon, and, and uh, yeah, the Cerberus now as well, although not all the time. Um, you just you want to just like completely stack as much like echoes and supplemental damage as possible to really max out the damage that that these three hit auto attacks do. 
but there isn't a whole lot of that in Earth. At least not yet. Like, um, obviously you have Chicken, Mahira, who is like the premier Earth buffer, who gives, who gives Ogies, but I don't think there's anyone in Earth who has like a passive uh, Ogi, uh, Echoes, like passive, like, um, like in Wind you have Grand Naru who gives gives echoes on crits, or like Summer Anila who gives echoes on triple attacks. And in water you have like uh, Grand Kalios, uh, not not Grand Summer Kaliostro as well who gives echoes when you crit. There isn't a character like that that I can think of in Earth. There's also not a whole lot of ways to just like completely stack as many echoes as you can in Earth. So, at the moment anyway, like, there isn't a whole lot to take advantage of this. But as I said, at the moment, like, she, she feels like a character who could be super, super good in the future if they add more stuff to Earth to really be able to, like, take advantage of this. But as it stands right now, at the moment... She seems more of just like a, like a, um, a skill damage spammer kind of thing, slash dodge tank. With this just being kind of a nice bonus, really. So, and um, I think like even with this, I'm not sure if she would actually find like a spot on, on like your typical like gorilla auto mashing setup. You know, maybe like maybe maybe this might be good for that, but you need to consume consume two of these to to instantly end the cooldown, which you're not going to be able to do turn one. So, uh, hmm, not sure about her. I mean, she just she doesn't seem bad. Like anyone that has this passive can't be bad, really. <laughs> Let's be honest. But um. But yeah, at the moment, anyway, she just seems mostly focused around skill damage. You know, Earth is a good and Earth is a good skill damage element. You know, it has has a bunch of other skill damage characters. It has you know, World Ender, which is a weapon basically based around skill damage and increasing skill damage. So, so yeah, and she she seems like she'd be a pretty good to dodge tank. She does have boosted hostility. Both from her passive and from this. She gets dodge all on on Ogi. She gets increased dodge rate from this. I think she seems fine. Not busted, I don't think. Not yet, anyway. She has the potential to be busted in future. Like I said, just because of this. But, um... But, yeah, not... Not crazy at the moment. Definitely not bad. I would honestly, I would like to get, I would like to get lucky and grow her just, you know, for her potential in the future. Because she, like I said, she does have the potential to be a monster of a character in the future just because of this. If they add more stuff, like other characters that can really help take advantage of this, like a character that gives passive echoes just, you know, for crits or triple attacks or whatever. You know, more characters that are just like crazy buffers that include echoes. Because at the moment, all you really have is Mahira for that, so... So yeah, she seems fine. Let's take a look at Vayne. See what he's all about. He's uh, he's wind. His, his Ogi massive wind damage default, restore Vayne's HP, end cooldown for... Vactaris. Probably butchered that. I'm assuming that's meant to be a German word. Skill 1, Wolf Beat, Wind Damage 3, 4, Hit to Earth, and Wind Defense. Okay. Pretty simple. Skill 2, the one which is reset on Ogi, Dodge, Slash, Tank, and Counter Effect to cast her 5 hits. Interesting. 5 hits is cool. Skill 3, Amplify Caster's Normal Attack Damage. Nice. Boost Defense Specs, CA Specs, and Chain Burst Specs.
Breaking five turns, 15 turn cooldown. Lasts for five turns. Hmm, I'm going to assume that there's going to be stuff that deals with the cooldowns and stuff like this of this. Let's have a look. Support skill. When Vayne has counter effect, deal triple attack. Deal, deal triple attacks and bonus wind damage effect. So when he has this, or when it's reset from Ogi, which gives him this, uh, he gets triple attacks and oh, and echoes. That's the same as a uh, summer Kumira. She does triple attacks and has echoes when she has dodge and counter. Oh, he has three. Oh, interesting. Second passive boost to wind allies defense takes effect even when Vayne is a sub ally. Okay. <laughs> so, if nothing else, just shove him in the back line and get a nice defense boost. Okay, interesting. And he has a. When switching to main ally passive, he has an evoker passive. Interesting. Activate Ritter's Seal. So that is. Okay, so this automatically activates when he comes in. For three turns, substitute effect, receive all ally attacks, undying effect, damage absorption effect. Can't be reactivated. Hmm. That's, uh... That's... Interesting. I'm not sure what to make of that, to be honest. So, like, discounting this, I get, like, ignoring this for a second, like, this is fine, but nothing special. Like, this is just a very standard one-hit nuke with some debuffs. Uh, dodge, dodge tank encounter is nice, which gives him this as well, which is nice, but that alone... It, it's kind of whatever. I'm not... <laughs> like, would you want to have... Mm. Like, would you want to actually put him in the back line and try to actually get him out quickly? To get this? Or just shove him in the front line for longer fights and just wait it out? I'm assuming that these are all going to be pretty, pretty big numbers. Like if it's like if it's similar to his water version, like I want to say like his his Ogi cap is like ninety percent or something that he gets from his special super mode skill. So I'm going to assume that for like CA specs, at least that's going to be similar as well. But as I say almost every one of these videos like they don't give numbers on this so I don't quite know how good it is but I'm going to assume that I'm going to assume that these all of these numbers are pretty good because they've put some kind of ridiculous conditions on it like you can't use it for five turns or you have to try and get them out of the back line and into the front line to to bypass this which in wind there isn't Assuming, well, I mean, you could just use an, an, an off-element character, like if you have, like, Christmas Rackham or something, just to, to quickly kill off someone in your front line and get them out, but aside from that, like, there isn't a lot of easy ways to get someone out of the back line and into the front line and win, so... And it's like, and even... Even if you just stick him in the front line, like he's not going to be able to do any kind of, he's not going to get this. Like you want to, like you want to get him out of the back line so that you can have an all ally sub, and undying and drain as well. So I'm not sure what to make of him, to be honest. Like, like I said, like ignoring this, like he's kind of whatever. But I'm going, to, like I said, and I'm going to assume that these, this is a really good skill. I should hope it's a really good skill based on its cooldown and the fact that you have all this shit to do with it, so... Yeah, I don't know. Like... <laughs> I 
that my my gut reaction is like I don't know. Maybe he's good. Maybe he's not. Like I I mean he's in wind, which again I think I've said this plenty of times in these videos as well. Like wind has some fucking busted characters. And like, and like, I'm, I'm not a person who's doing like the super hard end game raids all the time, so I'm not really looking. Me personally, I'm not really looking for someone that has crazy defensive stuff like this. So I don't know how useful he will be in general. I mean, if nothing else, you just stick him in the back line and get a, a defense boost. I don't know how high this defense boost is, but. A defense boost is still a defense boost. Which, you know, if you're going to stack this with, like, Summer Korwa <laughs> and her defense boosts and armored, like, could make wind really tanky. But, uh, I don't know what to make of him, to be honest. Like, personally, I probably wouldn't use him or just stick him in the back line because... I have like a lot of the other really good wind characters who it's kind of hard to push out for someone else, but but yeah. I mean, Vein fans got there. They finally got an alt, an alt for their boy, so I'm sure they'll be happy. His weapon seems good as well. Like if you want to do like enmity stuff in Primal Wind. But, uh, as an actual unit, I I honestly really don't know what to make of him. Just pure, mostly just purely because of this, this thing, this evoker passive here. Like, if they just, like, I don't know, got rid of the, the five turn lockout, and then just gave this defense, like, this, all this... All ally sub undying and drain when you activated it on top of all this. You would probably be pretty fucking nuts. But so like I'm like I said, I'm going to assume that these are all really good numbers just to make up for the fact that it has lockout and or having to treat them like an evoker to to get it off quickly and get these extra effects as well, so but yeah. Apart from that, it's... he seems fine. <laughs> I say that all the time. He seems fine. He doesn't seem bad. Like I don't think he's a bad unit by any stretch, but he's not. I don't think he's a, a completely busted unit. I don't. I mean, he leans more defensive, obviously, but he's in wind, which doesn't need it that much because of, if you have summer Korwa. So, I don't know, stick them in the back line. <laughs> but anyway, that's going to do it for for this edition of what are the new characters in Grand Blue Fantasy. I think that's all of the... I think that's it for our Halloween characters, because I'm pretty sure if the Halloween characters leave by the time Legfest rolls around, so... So yeah, we'll see what happens in a couple of weeks during that banner. But until then, thanks for watching and I will see you guys later. Peace out.